Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we have got a question today, really a topic of people who die too young, um, young adults and, and the struggle that people have. And our question's from Deb. And Deb's daughter, uh, she said, how do you deal with anger that comes when your 34-year-old daughter, only child, who worked hard, struggled, she was a runner, yoga enthusiast, and, and a healthy eater, and full of life, and she disappeared in an hour due to a brain hemorrhage. Wow, Deb, first of all, I want to say how sorry we are. Those sudden losses are incredible and very difficult to deal with. She sounds like a wonderful young woman, 34 years old. Well, my thought is that here, Deb has a daughter that was only 34, and it sounds like she was physically fit was a healthy eater, did yoga, and all of a sudden she dies. And, and it's, it's really disturbing um, mm -hmm. when people in the prime of their lives that are healthy suddenly die. Um, my brother died in a car accident at 17 and he was in the prime of his life as well. So I think it's a real shock to the system. I think there is some anger with the self at times too. I'm wondering if Deb feels some personal anger at her so shouldn't she have seen that her daughter wasn't exactly feeling well? Uh, shouldn't she have gotten her, I, we don't know the circumstances, but to the hospital quicker, shouldn't she have found her? You know, there are all sorts of things. With a brain hemorrhage, it can happen really quickly. My next door neighbor just uh, years ago um, just dropped dead on the floor, literally. The brain hemorrhage, sometimes they, they look, people look completely normal until That's they're right. not. Yeah. Until they die. They can. Yeah, they can look totally normal and have, have that happen. Um, it's, it's amazing to think somebody who is running, a yoga enthusiast, healthy eater. I mean, you do everything right, and life still takes it. You know, you still, the... the well, and then, and then I think it's hard because I think at that point you start to see people that don't take care of themselves mm -hmm. and it aren't healthy, and yet they live long lives. And so life isn't fair and it doesn't make sense, and it's hard to... to Put your arms wrap your arms around that fact it's mm -hmm. not fair and it sounds like deb had some challenges with her too because uh she uh struggled she said uh that her daughter struggled to find her way and then worked hard to get what she wanted to be so you know they probably had some struggles and she was seeing her come through and maybe you know developing this great relationship and her only child and then suddenly you know this happens and gosh it's hard not to be angry. I mean, you lose a lot when you lose an only child too, don't you, Heidi? Yes, because I think to a certain extent, you're still a parent, but you lose your identity of having a child physically on the earth mm -hmm. and then having the idea of having grandchildren eventually, et cetera. So there's a lot of losses that happen. And so mm -hmm. you have to be careful about not getting too far ahead of yourself in the future because it can be very overwhelming and it can cause you to feel very depressed. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it's important to um, reach out and to talk to people about this. And one of the places that you can go to on the internet is Alive Alone. That's Alive Alone. Kay Brevington started this organization. And there are people who get together. Uh, our friend Rick Yachty was part of Alive Alone. He was on the Compassionate Friends board with us. And he uh, would get together with some of those people, Kay Brevington and some of the people during the holidays. So uh, there may be uh, people that you can associate with and get together uh, together with. I know we have other friends who have lost an only child, and I know they've gotten very involved with nephews and nieces. Uh, Debbie and Dale, have, and they're put a uh, doula bond, and they put a lot on the internet about nephews and nieces now, but it took a few years for them to get at that point because starting out, you can feel envy. Right, right. And, and it feels like, you know, when you've had the, the loss of a brother or sister or a child or any kind of loss, all of a sudden you notice all those people that have children or that have siblings and you just start to notice it all the time. And mm -hmm. it can be very hard. 
like you said, you do feel envious and jealous and, and resentful that people still have their siblings, et cetera, and I didn't have Scott. I, I think one of the things that we want to do for you, Deb, is to um, normalize your coming and going anger because what's triggering it, that's what you need to take a look at and, uh, and normalize it. I mean, if you see somebody who has a daughter that age or grand, uh, grandchildren or whatever it is that triggers you, I don't know, um, realize, okay, you're angry, Debbie, but isn't that normal? I mean, what would you expect your neighbor to do under the same circumstances? It's not a matter of the feeling it gives you a bit. It's what you do with it. You know, anger can be adaptive, but you want to feel, find adaptive ways to release your anger. Mm -hmm. and exactly. not adaptive Because if you start to turn your anger against yourself, it can create a lot of health problems. And it can create problems in your relationships with people because you're walking around really angry and kind of getting triggered easily and getting angry at people and maybe pushing relationships away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also uh, some people turn to drinking or drugs and you have to be careful about that if that's not the way that you're kind of quelling your anger. And I'm thinking about your daughter, maybe some of the ways that you can honor her is you said she was a runner, a yoga enthusiastic, and healthy eater, and so full of life. And I'm wondering if maybe you can embrace some of those things mm -hmm. in your life, because those are the things, the things that she did to get find her way, as you said, maybe some things you might want to do to find your way. Pick some things that you want to do physically, may not be yoga, or it may be, or other kinds of exercise. Think about what you eat. Uh, think about, you know, running, you may not running, but walking, you know, things that you can do. She kind of showed you the way. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just, I just heard a, a, a podcast with uh, the actor Bradley Cooper this morning, and he talked about his father dying in his arms. And he said when his father died, he felt his energy and he's kind of embraced that energy. Like you said, mom, and, and almost taken his life to the next level because he's living his life for himself, but also with his father's energy in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So like you said, she can embrace what her daughter was all about and honor her by doing some of these things that, she, that her daughter showed her, showed her how to do and that she did. Mm -hmm. I mean, simple things, and you need to start out small. I mean, Deb, if you're talking about something that's happened to you in the last year, wow, maybe even walking around the block or the last yoga poses laying on the floor. Uh, it's about restorative yoga, mom, because the restorative, yeah, restorative. Yoga, all you're doing is really laying in different poses. You don't even That's feel right. out. Yeah, you, your energy a lot. Yeah, find some restorative yoga. You don't even have to know the poses. No, you restorative don't. yoga will take you and and go to look at yoga programs and find the restorative, and maybe a, a center where she went. But you may not. You may also want to find a place where nobody knew her. It's up to yeah. you. Whatever your thought. One of the things that you don't talk about is meditation and taking some time for yourself. Uh, go on the internet and there's a lot on meditation there that you can find. And uh, Oprah and Deepak have these little challenge programs for a month where, you, you know, they teach you about meditation. So you might want to try that. So anyway, tough. You miss her energy. And we can certainly understand that. We do miss these people, don't we, Heidi? Absolutely. And I think the energy is still out in the universe. Their bodies are gone, but their energy is still here. Mm -hmm. And I know we want them here, but we don't have them here. So tap into some of the energy and she is around. You just figure out a new way to continue a bond with her, even though she's not on the earth. And we are so sorry for your loss because we know it's, it's really, really tough. Mm -hmm. And we thank you all for watching uh, this uh, show today and listening. And Heidi and I want to remind you all that if you lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.